Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom, shalom. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Fraternal Ethiopian greetings. Salam to Tainayistaling. So this is going to be like an intro, an intro vlog, an intro reasonment. Been reasoning on this for quite some time among the Chabarim discipleship, Rastafari discipleship, LOJ society, the Lion of Judah society of his divine majesty, and reasoning amongst some of our brothers and sisters, some of the brethren, and brethren already know we've been reasoning on this for a while, you know, the Black America's, Black America's Rastafari roots, and we the Black Jews, Black America's Judeo-Christian unique, let's point that out, unique Judeo-Christian culture, the roots of Rastafari, both the man and the movement, and got to check out and hear Priest Isaac, I think it was on Sarnetta's uh, House of Consciousness on that platform there, and we was happy to hear when he brought out you know, the man and the movement, you know, and we enjoyed that presentation. We saw a couple of, um, a couple of technical points, you know, iron sharpened iron, and um, we give thanks for that. Um, this one um, crazy ball head, uh, someone named Garfield, he was just out of pocket with how he, he disrespected, you know, the Rastafari, Haile Selassie the first, and also I and I Rastafari, call himself Rastafari, but then we caught um, a video, I think him and his dagger squad, you know, he has something called a dagger squad. Well, here's going to be like the broad sword, <laughs> the broad sword, you know, of Rastafari, you know, you have a dagger. Well, this is going to be like a broad sword, a double edge, a double edge sword right here. It cuts when it goes in and cuts when it comes out. We're not going to make him and that the subject matter, but warning, warning, warning about this tribal warfare, this confusion, this kind of a COINTEL pro new millennia which is going on saying that the only real rosters so to speak you know going by the derivative you know are rastafari in jamaica and that any rosters outside jamaica are not real well this just shows and demonstrates the ignorance the ignorance whether it's willful or whether it's accidental or just based on you know the misinformation or disinformation that ones have heard, you know, repeating lies over and over. Some people will make be naive, they're true. But we have to speak up on our own roots. We got to do the research, put in that work. And many ones have put in work on that. We've been putting in work, content creating, had a whole platform, a whole channel that had content that was just taken down, all that been taken down, you know, Rastafari sabbatical, some ones and ones already know about that, you know, but um, not to get caught up on that, we recognize ones are martyred, so to speak, you know, ironically in the social media sphere, you know, because of truth. But here, speaking of the roots of Rastafari, black american roots roots in rastafari let's put it like that right also connected with that is the judeo-christian the unique judeo-christian ethiopian hebrew judeo-christian culture now many people believe that it was um marcus messiah garvey who kind of first proclaimed this message you know concerning a black king and looking to you know Africa and looking to the east, like look to the east. This is the way that it has come to us through the Rastafari of Jamaica, namely Benjamin. Benjamin. So the Benjamin and Judah part of the equation, and this is from the truth of our Hebrew Israelite culture. You know, we have Judah and Benjamin. Judah and Benjamin. Now, here, here, here. This is to speak to Rastafari Israelites. We call I and I cells Rastafari Israelites of North America. And because of this kind of divide, you know, this divide and conquer, you know, strategy of Babylon, it's this Babylon confusion that's trying to cause the Yankee Yardy kind of division, you know, the only real Rastas are those in Jamaica, Rastas outside of Jamaica are not real Rastas, and Marcus Garvey, he was the first to say this when he was not the first to point to the East, point to Africa, and point to a black king who will be crowned 
day of redemption, some say, some say liberation, some say, but the first one to actually, one of the first, and we're going to humble on this, one of the first, right, to say this is Reverend James Morris Webb, and this is all documented, these are all documented facts, so if anything, Marcus Messiah Garvey came from Jamaica to America, right, and he caught wind of this prophecy here in America, and when he was deported, when he went back to Jamaica, he proclaimed that, as Priest Isaac had mentioned, roughly around 1928, right? I don't remember the name of the park he mentions, but he mentioned this in 1928. I think it was circa March 1st. Actually, we have Reverend James Jacob Yaakov. Biblically speaking, James Morris Webb, that's the brother on the right hand. So those looking at the vlog right here, we have in the center, Kedamawi Haile Selassie, the Ras Tafari, Negus Tafari, Negus Ras Tafari, the Ras Tafari. Who was the first Rasta? If Rasta is associated with Rastafari, the first Rasta quote, end quote, right, would be the Rastafari, Kedamawi Haile Selassie. Some even say that, well, Rastafari began in Jamaica. No, that's not true. Rastafari did not begin in Jamaica, respectfully speaking. So here, let's first of all go to the scripts and the Bible to show the biblical prophecy. Here we have Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24 Verse 27, for as the lightning cometh out of the east, look to the east, and shineth even to the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, Revelation chapter 12 speaks about the birth of the man child, the man child, right? The man child, 1892, Tafari, or Elij. Tafari and Ijasa Gora, Ethiopia. We have scripture prophecy, Psalm 87, verse 4. In Psalm 87, verse 4, it says, With Ethiopia or Im Kush Ze Yulad Sham. The translator KJV says, With Ethiopia, this man shall be born there. This man was born there. This man was born where? says with Ethiopia. So the Ethiopia connection in black America's Rastafari roots or the roots of Rastafari right in black America of black America. Because we know the roots is Ethiopia. So Rastafari began, right, if we can say began, began in the East. All right, so even from Marcus Garvey's statements, so now from the Jamaica perspective, from the Benjamite perspective, Jaman, Yaman, from the Benjamite perspective, yeah, we, we understand. See, you have to look at some of these things that people are saying from their own perspective, all right, from their own perspective, because most ones don't know how deep the so-called black America or we, the black people here, up in this North Country, how deep our roots in Rastafari, Ethiopia, Beta Israel, Israelite history really, really goes because we're only what? 13 to 14 percent of the population, <laughs> right? 13 to 14 percent of the population, and the real Rastafari of Jamaica. Uh, it is probably 1%. Statistics. This is statistically proven. Statistically proven about 1% to maybe 2%. But then often you meet a lot of Jakes or Jamaicans that, you know, would say that they are Rasta, you know, even though they are not Rastafari, such as Garfield. He said that on the Priest Isaac's, um, his presentation on Sarnetta's House of Consciousness uh, platform that's called the Truth, the Truth of Rastafari. And Priest Isaacs presented a very good presentation. He did. But he presents a presentation that was from, we could say, the Caribbean, the Caribbean perspective. Many would say, well, Rastafari, all this began, because this is how many people have believed it to be so. But it actually, 
over here in the West, it began in this mainland. It began amongst Judah, amongst Yehuda, so-called Negroes of North America, the black Americans. How do we know this? We know this because of the first proclaimer, right? The first proclaimer that linked the biblical Bible prophecy and biblical truth with the reality right, that had appeared and was appearing on the ground in earth. Right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done right, in earth, right, in the earth. And this was James Morris Webb, right, where he said that a black king shall rule the world. And he also brought forward that word. So when Garvey was in America, right, when did Garvey come to America? And just do your research. We said this is going to be just a basic, you know, like a kind of a shot across the bow, so to speak. You know, just a basic video right here. Right? A basic kind of an intro. Right? Because there's so much documentation, evidence that we have. As people say nowadays, so much receipts. But no, receipts, receipts are based on what you buy. <laughs> We're going to give you invoices, all right? We're going to give you invoices because invoice means what you, what you owe. It gives an accounting, all right, what you owe, all right? But the evidence, there's so much evidence that we have, all right, both to the black American or black Americas, Afro-Americans, uh, Rastafari roots, as well as our own unique Judeo-Christian culture, both here in the Americas and also how it connects with Africa, generally speaking, right from West Africa all the way to the roots in the East. Now, the, the man on the left-hand side is Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew. He also has a very important document that has been written about him and the community known as the Commandment Keepers, the Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation, right, which was active, right, active circa 1930, but comes out of another congregation or a group of like-minded black peoples right, here in this North Country. Now, it's not saying that we don't have links. You know, we were scattered in the West, in the Americas, as we often say, over and over in the Americas, speaking of North America and South America, right? And the Caribbean, Caribbean, the trans Ethiopian, Ethiopic, Ethiopian Ocean slave trade or enslavement trade, because remember that water was known as the Ethiopic or Ethiopicus, the Ethiopian Ocean. Then they change the name of it. As the scripture says, they shall seek to change laws and time or even try to change things up so that we won't be able to really know ourselves because they have changed things. But this is where research is so vital and so very important. Now, a couple of basic things that we'll like to share right here. One of them is this right here, okay? There's some notes here in this document called The Order of the Coronation. But let's go back to Garvey for a moment, all right? Now, Garvey, Marcus beside Garvey, has been likened to um, John the Baptist, all right? Perhaps we can see that because John the Baptist lost his head, you know? So Garvey did say what he is alleged to have said, all right? But then if we continue the narrative, we see where what Garvey said when he was in England, right? When he was in England, right? When he, um, the best person that really outlines this is another brother we don't have here in an exhibit before you. His name is Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. So while some might speak about Charles Edwards or Charles Edwards Emmanuel, you know, of the Bobo Shanti, we have the Emmanuel of Ketamawi Haile Selassie, that Emmanuel in this dispensation, this time, and that is Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, His Majesty's special emissary to black America, 
check special emissary to black America. So all of this, actually, the roots of this precedes Garvey's, we could say, Rastafari Declaration of 1928. Now, it's significant, 1928, if it is true that Garvey proclaimed that on March 1st, 1928, because roughly around October of 1928, Rastafari became Negus Tafari, or more known around the world as Negus Rastafari. Even though Ras is a title and Negus is a title, these ancient Ethiopian Hebrew titles, he was still known as Rastafari even while and after being crowned as Negus. Right, as Negus, and this is two years before the coronation and the anointing to the throne of great King David in 1930, November 2nd, 1930. So Garvey got that word sound, right, from, where did Garvey get that word sound from? When he was in, where? He was in the wilderness, the wilderness of what? The wilderness of North America. When he was in the wilderness of North America, in other words, Garvey did not leave Jamaica with this Rastafari consciousness, even though he did have a pro-Ethiopia consciousness, it seems, it appears. There's some question whether he really did. We have to see his pre-America works. What was he writing before? What was he saying before he left Benjamite, the Benjamite Island, Benjamin's Island, J.A. Jaman, Jamaica, and he came to America, we have to compare that, right? Because there's a lot of things that have been alleged and made to believe is so. And when many of us have gone to research these things for ourselves, we see, Chan, it's just not so. And then to have someone's jumping and running out the window and saying that you black Americans, you Yankees would not even know anything about culture if it wasn't for, you know, um, Jakes or Jamaicans or Rastas from Jamaica. Pardon yourself. <laughs> you need to pardon yourself with that. But we can understand. We can understand. Perhaps it's the, the, the limited information coming under a British, a Brit shit system. Under a Brit shit system, there was an embargo on knowledge and information. Some things only trickle down. So when Garvey was deported and he returned, he brought a powerful message from the wilderness, a message that he got while he was in the wilderness of North America. Those black Americans who came to the UNIA and who proclaimed the message of Rastafari to the UNIA. See, some people don't recognize that. They don't, even the message that came forward from Rastafari to the UNIA. Now here we have this right here. We have this right here. Let's just share this right here. This is from a document. This is from a document, right? A document here known as a Sarata Nigus. Sarata Nigus. Nigus. Sarata Nix. Order of the Coronation. And here we're on page 99. 99. All right. This is if a shepherd have a hundred sheep. <laughs> and one of them go astray, doesn't he leave the 99 and goes to search out that lost, the lost sheep? As the Messiah Yeshua, our Rabbi, Robeno Yeshua HaMoshiach, who the world calls Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, you know, as, 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 as he even, you know, as he even says, right? Proclaim this message to the who? The lost sheep of the beta Israel. Right, the Beta House of Israel. So here on page 99, and this is from the book, the document known as the Order of the Coronation. Let's just heal up our brother from Farai, right? The translator and the writer and compiler and researcher, Ayurid Mehirata Mehirata Selassie, Francesco Bellizzi. Right? Right here, here, here. So page 99. Though he represented a rather specific field. Now, this is connected with, um, let's just go to the paragraph. So it won't be too long right here. But just to put this on the record right here. 
right? Um, uh, though he represented a rather specific field within the African intellectual and political struggle, the remarks at the time from the great Jamaican Benjamite in biblical and biblical context, but the Jamaican leader, Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, exemplify the heartfelt welcome that the news of the coronation event in Ethiopia received among blacks in the West. Now, when we say blacks in the West, we're saying blacks in the Americas, blacks in the Caribbean, Jamaica, the other islands, and also South America as well. No divide and conquer here, right? It's to gather. It says to Yehuda, to Judah, right? The so-called Negroes of North America shall the gathering of the people be. Quote, last Sunday, a great ceremony took place at Addis Ababa, the capital of Abyssinia. It was the coronation of the new emperor of Ethiopia, Rastafari. From reports and expectations, the scene was one of great splendor and will long be remembered by those who were present. Now, the, the thing that we're quoting here, right, is a document known as Black Man. Right, Black Man, says Kingston, November 8th, November 8th, 1930. Check, November 8th, 1930. All right. Let's go on. All right, 1930. Next paragraph. Several of the leading nations of Europe sent representatives to the coronation, thereby paying their respects to a rising Negro nation that is destined to play a great part in the future history of the world. Now, in reading this, if this is connected with um, Marcus Garvey, if this is connected with Marcus Garvey, let's let's note right here. Let's note that John the Baptist, according to the Bible, also gave Yeshua, the Messiah, Yeshua in the first advent, glowing reviews at first before he ended up in, in prison. And he says, is it you that we seek? Is it you that we seek or should we seek another? Because he had his own expectations of the Messiah, and when the Messiah did not fit his expe expectations, then as Matthew chapter 11 says and demonstrates, he lost his head. Abyssinia is the land of the blacks, and we are glad to learn that even though Europeans have been trying to impress the Abyssinians that they are not belonging to the Negro race, they have returned the retort that they are and that they are proud to be so. Let's also note this right here of the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey, that he is testifying to something that you still hear some folks nowadays say that, oh, the Ethiopians and Hala Selassie, they didn't consider themselves Negroes. And even from that time back in the 30s and even before that, if we look at another great um, black American uh, scholar and writer and brother and Israelite and Ethiopian Hebrew named J.A. Rogers, right, the, um, was it the, the truth about Ethiopia? Right? In that particular document, he points it out, and here Garvey is saying the same thing, that even though Europeans have been trying to impress the Abyssinians, a.k.a. the Ethiopians, that they are not belonging to the Negro race, they have returned the retort that they are and that they are proud to be so. Didn't we say that if others got little daggers or whatnot, the Sicaris and daggers, right, that we have been given a double-edged sword? Right, so it cuts when it go. It cuts both ways. It cuts when it goes in. It cuts when it comes out. So even to some of the 70 A.D., the 1970 A.D. Latter Day Israelites, or some of the camps that all come out from one west, the I.S.U.P.K. camp, they go around now with this Zondervan, a Latter Day Bible concordance that is, at best, a work of Cointel Pro fiction. Right, saying that, well, the Ethiopians are not Negroes, but then our ancestors, right, of all the great movements today, if they are movements today and they have any greatness to them, they have their roots back in the days, especially circa the turn of the 20th century 
and especially since the Roaring Twenties, the 1920s, nearly a hundred years ago. But let's go forward right here, here, here. Rastafari has traveled to Europe and America and is therefore no stranger to European hypocrisy and methods. He, therefore, must be regarded as a kind of a modern emperor, or in Ethiopian terms, in our language, we say king of kings. Right? And from what we understand and know of him, he intends to introduce modern methods and systems into his country. Already, he has started to recruit from different sections of the world competent men in different branches of science to help him to help to develop his country to the position that she should occupy among the other nations of the world. Next paragraph. We do hope that Rastafari will live long to carry out his wonderful intentions. And just a note here, we really hope that Garvey could have also, you know, lived longer, even as John the Baptist could have lived longer to see that what he first said concerning the Messiah, both in the first and the second advent, right, would and did come to pass. Again, we do hope that Rastafari will live long to carry out his wonderful intentions. From what we have heard and what we do know, he is ready and willing to extend the hand of invitation to any Negro who desires to settle in his kingdom. It's interesting that such works, and this came from the black man, right? The black man, Kingston, November 8th, 1930. It's amazing that ones and ones who speak about Garvey and even some who speak about Rastafari have not noted this particular document, this historical document, this factual document. And much of this from Garvey, let's get this book over here, this book here that we was, yeah, the real facts, it's called the real facts about Ethiopia. I said the truth about Ethiopia, but the document's actually known as the real facts about Ethiopia by J.A. Rogers. And this is a document that was in circulation when Garvey was when Garvey was around, right? The real facts about Ethiopia is copyrighted, first written and published, it says here, in nineteen in nineteen thirty six. In nineteen thirty six. All right. Now, we know that Garvey was very well read and very well learned, you know, so Garvey was searching for the greatness of our people, his people and our people, you know, even back in those days. So he had access and, and, and job blessed him to get access to various information. So there was a lot of pro-black or pro, we say Ethiopia, pro-black information back in the 1920s, even before the 1920s, but we just started at the 1920s, the roaring 20s right now. In the 1920s and especially the 30s, but even before that, coming out of America. In fact, the reason why Garvey came to America, as it is said, Marcus Messiah Garvey from Jamaica, why he came to America, Right? Why our Benjamite brother came to visit his Judahite brothers, right? The Negroes up here in the north was to meet up with um to meet up with the brother, right? The brother who had the um 